This is lesson 5-5, five, five, multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. Two-thirds of the students at the lunch table ordered a hamburger for lunch. One half of these students ordered cheese on their hamburgers. What fraction of the students at the lunch table ordered a cheeseburger? Well, if you look at the diagram, you can see that there were 12 students that ate hamburgers. This represents two-thirds of the twelve. This represents one-half of the two-thirds. So that would be one-half of two-thirds would equal one-third. How are the numerators and denominators of two-thirds and one-half related to the fraction in exercise one. <clears throat> well, the numerator of two tells us how many groups of four there are here of the three, and the numerator one shows us that one of those um, out of the two that um, were chosen by students is um, the fraction one half. This is 1 out of 2. The bigger fraction is 2 out of 3. The key concept to multiply fractions, multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. In the example, you can see 2 thirds, or 1 half times 2 thirds, which is the example we did up here. We multiply 1 times 2, which is the numerators, gives us 2. 2 times 3 is the product of the denominators, which is 6. Algebraically, A, A over B times c over d equals ac over bd, where b and d cannot be zeros. Can't divide by a zero. Multiply. Write in simplest form. In the example here, you can see they've used a model. They've taken a rectangle and they've divided it in half. You can see the half indicated here. Then they've divided each of those halves into thirds, they want, these are the thirds right here you can see, they want one-third of one-half, one-third, or one-half of one-third, which is one-sixth, which is one times one over two times three, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Here we have a model of two rectangles. We've divided each rectangle into fourths, and what we want is three-fourths of the two. So here's three fourths here, here's three fourths here, which is a total of six fourths. You can see that in the example right here. We get that by doing numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Six fourths gives us an improper fraction. We can simplify this by dividing numerator and denominator by two, which gives us the improper fraction three over two, which they would rename as would we to one and one half. I mean, in example A, three fifths times one half is equal to three times one over five times two, which is three tenths. In example B, one third times three fourths is one times three over three times four which is 3 twelfths. Now they don't tell us to simplify here, but we're going to assume whenever we're working with fractions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, that we're going to write it in simplest form unless they specifically tell us not to or there's a specific need not to. So this would actually simplify to 1 fourth. In example C, 2 thirds times 4. 4 is a whole number to make that a fraction, we simply give it a denominator of 1, so we can do numerator times numerator. 2 times 4 over 3 times 1, which gives us 8 over 3, which we would rename as 2 and 2 thirds as a mixed number. <coughs> if the numerator and denominator of each of either fraction have common factors, you can simplify before you multiply. Simplify before you multiply. A key concept. A struggle for lots of kids, but a really important concept if you can get it. 
2 times 3 over 7 times 8, you notice that the 2 and the 8 have a common factor of 2. They can show you here that they've divided both of those by 2. So instead of 2 sevenths times 3 eighths, we have 1 seventh times 3 fourths. And the, the nice thing about that is then when we multiply and get 3 28ths, we know that that fraction's in simplest form because we simplified before we multiplied. Example D, 1 third times 3 sevenths. We can divide both of these 3's by 3. Gives us a 1 here and a 1 here, so our answer then in simplest form is 1 seventh. Example E, 4 ninths times 1 eighth. The 4 and the 8 have a common factor of 4, so 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1 as a numerator. 9 times 2 is 18 as a denominator. So 9 fourths times 1 eighth is 1 eighteenth. Example F, 5 6 times 3 fifths. This is one of those rare um, occasions where we can simplify both ways. Divide, divide both of these by 5, gives us 1. Divide this by 3, divide this by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So instead of 15 over 30, we have the simplified fraction 1 over 2. Multiplying mixed number. Now, mixed number is a number with a fraction part and a whole number part. In order for us to do numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator, which is our multiplication algorithm, we have to change 4 and 2 fifths, as you can see here, to an improper fraction. 4 and 2 fifths as an improper fraction. 4 over 1 times um, to change that to fifths we would multiply that times 5 over 5 which gives us 20 over 5 we add the 2 from this fraction which gives us the 22 over 5 the resulting 22 over 5 that you see right here notice we can simplify before we multiply divide both of those by 2 so our resulting answer is 1 times 11 over 1 times 5 11 fifths which we then rewrite as a mixed number. Uh, method number two, they use mental math. I think all they're saying there is they're going to use the distributive property, which saves us changing four and two-fifths to an improper fraction. They've taken four and two-fifths and written it as a sum, you can see here. Um, one half of four is two. You can see that right here. And one half of two-fifths is one-fifth. So we can add those together and getting the same result that we got up here of two and one fifths. Two and one fifth. Doesn't always work that smoothly, but in this case it's a nice way to do it. Um, notice they estimated here too. They did uh, one half of four. They left the one half here. They rounded this to four. One half of four is two. They didn't show us that or tell us that. But they did that. Same thing up here. They took one half, left it the same, rounded four and two fifths to four, one half of four is two. Both of those are reasonable answers based on those estimates. Um, let's estimate here for G, just to keep that trend going. We have one fourth of eight, which is two. So we're looking for an estimate of, or an answer of about two. 1 fourth times 8 and 4 ninths, which would be 76 over 9. That's um, another way of doing that. Let me show you a shortcut here. 8 and 4 ninths to change that to an improper fraction. What we do is we keep the denominator. We multiply denominator times whole number. That gives us the 72. Multiply right here. Then we add this 4 which gives us the resulting 76. And I could show you a longer, more complicated way than that, but I'm not going to do that right now. Now we can simplify here. Um, divide that number by 4. Divide 76 by 4 and get 19. Our result is 19 over 9, which renames to an improper fraction, or a mixed number, I should say, of 2 and 1 ninth. <coughs> a 
example H. Um, back to this one for a second. That is a, a reasonable answer based on our estimate. Example H, we're going to say uh, 5 times 3. We're just going to round 5 to 5 and a third to 5. We're going to leave the 3. We're going to get an estimate of 15. Uh, an underestimate, so expect an answer of more than that. 5 and 1 third times 3. 5 and 1 third using this method up here. 3 times 5 is 15. Plus 1 is 16, so we have 16 thirds times 3 over 1. Simplify here and here, we get an answer of 16, which is reasonable based on that, that we had already said was an underestimate. 1 and 7 eighths in example I times 2 and 2 fifths. Um, a simple estimate there would be 2 times 2, which is 4. I um, have to rename both of these now. 1 and 7 eighths. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 7 is 15 over 8. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12 over 5. Setting up this really nice looking um, pair of factors because we can simplify all over the place. We can divide by 5 here, and 5 here, and 4 here, and 4 here. So instead of 15 times 12, we get 3 times 3, which is 9 over 2. 2 times 1 denominator gives us a, an answer of 4.5, clearly in agreement with our estimate. Humans sleep about one-third of each day. If each year is equal to 365 and a fourth days, determine the number of days in a year the average human sleeps. Here's that written as a sentence. We've chosen the variable D to represent days. The number of days a person sleeps is one-third times 365 and one-fourth. Here's the math down here. Here's the equation from here. You can see here that they've changed 365 and one-fourth to an improper fraction. One plus four plus six plus one. This is a nice um, use of um, divisibility test for three. Students should know that 1,461 is divisible by 3, and you can see here that they divided by 3. They don't show you that, but that's what they did. So now we have 1 times 487 on the top, multiplying the numerators. 1 times 4 in the, in the, on the bottom, multiplying the denominators. We then divide 4 into 487, and we get 121 and 3 fourths days. Amazing to think that humans sleep 121 and 3 fourths days each year. Real world example two. The house cat has an average lifespan that is four fifths of a lion's. If a lion's lifespan is 15 years, find the average lifespan of a house cat. Again, here's the, the sentence or the phrase. Uh, they've chosen C for cat. For the variable, the lifespan of a cat is four fifths of the lifespan of a lion, which is 15. Here's the algebraic equation. 4 fifths times 15 over 1, changing 15 to an improper fraction. Simplifying the 5 and the 15 by dividing them both by 3. Or by 5, I should say. They say that over here, I guess. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 over 1 is 12. So the average lifespan of a house cat is 12 years. Check your progress. Sophia wishes to make one half a recipe if half... If the original recipe calls for three and three-fourths cups, how many cups should she use? There's our equation. One-half times 12. Four times three is 12 plus three is 15 over four. Can't simplify here. So we get 15 over eight, which gives us one and seven-eighths cups needed to make half the recipe. Check your understanding. Two thirds times one third. Two thirds times one third. What we know is we're going to get an answer that's less than two thirds. Uh, we can't simplify here, so we simply take numerator times numerator, which is two, denominator times denominator, which is nine. The answer is two ninths. Example two, two times two fifths. Change two to an improper fraction. Again, can't simplify. Answer four fifths. Two times two is four. One times five is five. Example three, one-sixth 
times 4, 4 over 1. Here we can simplify, dividing both of these by 2 gives us an answer of 2 thirds. Doesn't seem right to me. Apparently it is. Number four, <clears throat> one fourth times eight ninths. Can I simplify here? Yes, divide by four, divide by four. My answer is two ninths. One times two, numerator, one times nine, denominator. Uh, number five, two and a fourth times two thirds. My answer is going to be less than two and a fourth. Change two and a fourth to an improper fraction. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. Nine over four times two over three. Simplify here and here by dividing by three. Simplify here and here by dividing by two. My answer, three over two, which is one and a half. Number six, one and five sixths times three and three fifths. One and five sixths, uh, let's see, our estimate here would be probably two times four, or about eight. One and five sixths, six times one is six, plus five is eleven sixths, times fifteen, three, five times three is fifteen, plus three is eighteen fifths. Simplify here by dividing by 6. Gives me um, 3 here and 1 here. 33 over 5, which is 6 and 3 fifths. Reasonably close to my estimate because this is clearly an overestimate. Last uh, understanding problem, number 7. The weight of an object on Mars is 2 fifths of its weight on Earth. How much would an 80 pound dog weigh on Mars, 2 fifths of 80 is 2 fifths times 80 over 1. 80 over 1, divide this by 5, divide this by 5 gives me 16. 2 times 16 is 32 over 1, which is 32. So the 80 pound dog on Earth weighs 32 pounds on Mars. At this point, you should quit the video, go back to my webpage, click on Lesson Quiz 55, log in using your six digit student number, and use the password, which is the first six digits of your last name and your two digit birthday, and take the lesson quiz. Thank you.